harbor trout, you know, nearly became extinct. And then due to, due to genetical analysis and finding genetically pure populations in the little rivers that are above the waterfalls. So the other brown trout that were introduced could not penetrate. So then with the fishing club of Tomin that does a lot of research and also Fisheries Research Institute, they found those populations and started to breed them and reintroducing them to the river. So um, that's why it is not endangered anymore. And it's only in present in the rivers that drain to Adriatic. I would think that usually the best time to catch the marble trout is the worst of times to come. Because that basically means that you need to risk it a little bit on rain and high water level, an environment or the river that is not actually so pretty. So in these times you can forget about nymphs and dry flies and all that stuff, but concentrate just on streamers. So it's basically quite often it would happen, those would be the times when other fishermen would be sitting in the bar drinking wine because they're soaking their sorrows. You know, it's very so bad fishing. So that's probably the best time to come for marble trout. A, a big specimen, let's say. Um, to come and enjoy nature and maybe nymph, maybe with a dry fly. If a storm appears, streamer, okay, of course. It's basically anything between April and the last of October. The most guaranteed that the rivers will be low, clear, that you know you can see fish. It's probably first part of April and from middle June, well, till November. Marble trout is a predatory fish, as when it reaches, usually let's say when it reaches 50 centimeters, it becomes strictly carnivorous. That means that it only eats other fish. Um, up to 50 centimeters, it's possible to catch on a nymph or even on a dry fly if the conditions are suitable. But also it means that for a nymph or a dry fly, usually you have to find one that is willing to take in a shallow water because if it's in the deep pool between the rocks, you cannot really come there with a nymph because it's too deep. Okay, you can go a big heavy streamer, but still they are quite smart. So it will not just take anything. It's not like rainbow that eats all the time because I guess because the thing is that us being carnivorous fish, they eat maybe once in two weeks. They take one fish and that's it, they're, they're done. So you need to be at the right spot, you know, within two weeks for five minutes and then you can catch it. The easiest time is when it's just after rain, when the water starts to go up, because then the small fish that are in the river start to move and then the big marble trout have the chance to catch them. So that is, this moment is the best one. In the beginning, the flies, the idea that I had is, of course, it needs to be a very big fly and you need to have it quite close to the bottom. So obviously, how to achieve that, you just stick a lot of lead on the fly and it goes down. So that was the first prototype and it was actually successful. Um, the only trouble that it does happen is because it's usually like a jig hook or so. When the fish is hooked, it shakes it out because of the counterweight of the hook. So that's one problem that I saw. And the second problem was also it's not really casting, is throwing it. And that I find no sensation. Because for me, fly fishing, it's all about sensation. It's to enjoy the cast, to enjoy nature, to enjoy, you know, when the fly lands there. So it's an art aspect of it. And with this, I don't, I couldn't find any art or it's, it, there is skill, but not art, let's say. So that's why I came up with the idea also when combining with when I fish for hucho, so I designed hucho fishing lines that are basically, it's a 25 foot, 750 grain sink tip. So it's very, very, very heavy sink tip to get 
the fly down, the light fly down. So the fly is the same size, are the same size, but relatively light or very little weight, but the line itself pulls the fly down. And when you strip the line, the fly behind swims in a very natural movement. And the tippet needs to be only this long because that is then goes, the line goes close to the bottom and the fly usually would stay like this. And that is close enough to the bottom for the fish, the marble trout that lives very much on the bottom or between the rocks to move for it and take it. I, when I was a kid, I always was, you know, wanted to catch one. It was, and to have it on the wall, you know, a big one on the wall, that's me. Yeah, that's it, my dream come true, big one on the wall that I have it. Um, then I started to fish the Idrica River, that is a tributary to Socha. Um, and I was one of the first people that here that started to use streamers this big. Everybody thought I'm crazy and were laughing at me. What the hell is this kid doing? Because I was under 20 at the time. And then all of a sudden I started to catch them. It went a lot of totting, a lot of process, how, when, what weight to use, what line to use, what the size of the fly should be, what is the correct time and so on. Um, and then all of a sudden I started to catch them. And the biggest one that I caught at that time was just above 90 centimeters. Um, I had it on the bank, so I saw this beautiful creature, probably more than 10 years old. I was like, yeah, this is my childhood dream, this on the wall. Shit, 10 years old. It's so beautiful. Do I even take, I, I take a picture, but I only had a phone with me. So I call a friend, said, I have this, can you come to take a picture? I said, no, no, it's, sorry, I'm not here. So I'm like, oh, this, it will be such a poor picture, but I'll take a picture. I took a picture beside the rod. I was like, ah, oh, this, I cannot kill it. This fish needs to go back. I don't deserve this to be killed. So I let it go. And that will stay with me forever. And I think that is still to this moment, it's the, absolutely the correct decision that I made then. It was, yes, this was the first big marble shot that I caught. I caught more and some a little bigger as well. But for me, that was, you know, probably the moment in this valley, in this area that was the most precious and I cherish it, I'll cherish it forever. Thank you.